Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the moon. Now you, what you just observed was a lunar eclipse. And if you were in US or anywhere in North America in I believe it was February 2017, you may actually have experienced the craze of the penumbral eclipse that everyone was observing and everyone was talking about. What exactly is a penumbral eclipse? You're going to find out in this video. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So to start this video, let's actually create our own individual solar system with just the sun and Earth orbiting around it at a distance of about one astronomical unit, maybe a little bit farther away. And uh, also, let's just add the moon to it. We're going to uh, simulate what a lunar eclipse is and also what a solar eclipse is, just so you can get an idea the difference between them and what it's all about. I usually don't really think of it as a big deal, although the excitement of watching objects in space and the excitement of basically being able to see um, the moon, the earth and so on, uh, even if it's just to see a shadow passing by is always, always awesome. So I'm not going to say that I don't like them, it just, it's not my thing. But anyway, I'm going to explain to you uh, by essentially placing our moon a little bit closer to Earth, just so that you can actually see the shadow better. And um, I'm going to explain to you the difference between lunar and solar eclipse, and possibly just briefly mention what penumbral and umbral eclipses are. So I'll just close this for a second. So here is the moon orbiting around Earth, maybe a little bit uh, closer than it usually is. So as the moon passes around Earth, it's going to basically align itself with the Earth and the Sun, and they're basically going to create a perfectly straight line. So if we were to look at the Sun and draw a line from the Sun to Earth, then as soon as the Moon crosses that line, that's essentially when we would expect the Earth's shadow to basically hit the Moon. And this is, uh, it's about to happen any second now, this is what we would call, um, there you go, you just kind of witnessed it. This is what we would call um, a lunar eclipse, basically an eclipse of the moon by the Earth's shadow. What you just witnessed was actually um, a penumbral lunar eclipse. It's an eclipse that kind of just passes by the uh, maybe the side of the moon with um, only the penumbra, the less visible shadow of Earth covering the moon and making the moon change color a little bit. Usually it kind of looks like this. Penumbral eclipses, just like the partial eclipses and the total eclipses, um, are quite common. And uh, about 35% of all eclipses are usually penumbral. Basically, they're only uh, partial shadows. You may have witnessed um, or you may have noticed there was actually a shadow passing on, on Earth as well. And that was an, um, an example of a solar eclipse. But let's actually just um, change the orbit a little bit. We're going to go into motion here and change the inclination to about zero degrees just so you can actually witness a full and total eclipse of the moon. So there's um, going to be everything covered by the Earth's shadow. There's about 35% of these uh, of all lunar eclipses, and these are also quite common and happen about two to five times a year. And it's going to happen anytime soon. Here we go, and a three, and a two, and a one. There you go, total eclipse of the moon, total lunar eclipse. Now let's see what uh, we can do when the moon passes in front of Earth, and this will be a solar eclipse. You're going to witness that as well. Um, so the moon is going to place its own shadow on top of the surface of Earth and create what we would call a solar eclipse. A slightly more exciting event because basically everything in the sky gets really, really dark and uh, creates a kind of a, there you go, creates a kind of a night-like effect. So right now the entire Australia would be in um, under total eclipse of the sun. Now, the thing is, um, this game doesn't really recreate eclipses very well, but the shadow here looks a little bit unrealistic. What you would have in reality is the umbra in the middle, which is that very dark shadow, and the penumbra around it, which is the slightly less dark shadow. Uh, but right now you can see like the actual eclipse though, looks really, really cool. So the shadow passes through Australia and basically leaves uh, a part of it in complete sh uh, shadow, including these other islands in the Pacific here. 
We're going to try to do another partial eclipse. Uh, I just changed the inclination to about three degrees, just so you can actually see what a partial eclipse looks like as well. So the partial, penumbral, and total eclipses usually kind of take turns and depending on where the moon is located, depending on, on its inclination, which I think right now is a little bit too high actually. I'm going to maybe lower this a little bit or, or I guess raise this a little bit higher. And have it change the inclination a little bit, you can kind of see, there you go, this is a partial eclipse where only a part of the moon is covered by the shadow of Earth and most uh, or a big part of the moon is still visible um, underneath. So this would be a partial eclipse, a partial lunar eclipse. Uh, so there's about 30% of these in comparison to other types of uh, lunar eclipses. And so in total, we can usually observe about two to five different types of eclipses a year. And at minimum, there's always at least two. And depending on, on where uh, the moon is located, in terms of inclination, usually you'll either get the partial or the full eclipse. Now the thing is, or well, one thing that most people don't realize is that you can only have a solar eclipse when the moon is completely dark. Essentially when the moon has just become uh, or disappeared um, and basically is no longer visible in the sky. When you see the new moon, that's usually right after the solar eclipse. So right now, because the moon is essentially covering the sun, you can only see the dark side of it and uh, this will obviously create a shadow right there in Northern Africa. On the other hand, to see the lunar eclipse, the moon has to be full. It can only happen when the moon is absolutely full and is essentially facing our planet and that's when you would see the lunar eclipse right around, uh, right around now. So this would be when the moon is completely full. And the other thing I wanted to mention in this video before I finish it is in relation to tides. So uh, when it comes to tides or tidal effects, we get um, really strong tidal effects from the moon, but also from the sun. And um, when the moon is in this location right here or right here, the tides are at their lowest because the moon is actually pulling on Earth's water uh, at about 90 degrees from what the sun is doing and it actually cancels out the tidal effect. These are called neap tides, uh, they're usually really, 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 um, really low. On the other hand, when the moon is here, when you have um, essentially the uh, the solar eclipse, possibility for, for a solar eclipse, you have the highest possible tides. And uh, because of this, because of the possibility of, you know, having really high tides and the solar eclipse happening at the same time uh, for many, many, many years in different cultures, this was always, uh, the solar eclipse at least, there was always some kind of a bad omen. And this is really because it just so happens that, you know, when the moon is covering the sun, there's a shadow of the moon on the earth, it also coincides with ridiculously high tides because both the moon and the sun are actually pulling, um, on Earth creating extra tides and extra tidal effects. And that's really why there's so much superstition in regards to the uh, so-called solar eclipses. And anyway, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching science and uh, math and space science videos using video games. Come back tomorrow because you're going to learn something new and something really interesting. Space out, I'll see you guys later. Let's maybe stop moon for a second and decrease its velocity until we get an intercept orbit with a planet Earth and finish the video on this beautiful collision that's about to occur right here. Oh, look at that in Western Africa. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.